Welcome to part one in this series of videos where I'll be looking at cascading grids in a Blazor application. It's going to be a step-by-step -step guide where I hope to take you through the whole process from beginning to the final application. I'll show you the final application shortly, but first, why cascading grids? Cascading grids can be a great way of presenting data that might be grouped or subgrouped. In many cases, data is held in a relational database where the data is in a hierarchical structure. For example, we might have geographical data grouped by continent, then by country, and finally city. It would be helpful if we had a grid at the top level that showed a list of continents. And then by clicking on a particular continent, we could then display the countries in a subgrid for that continent. And finally, by looking at the list of countries and selecting one, a further grid could then show the cities for that country. There are many types of data where this structure is used. Another example from financial software is where you might have a customer. By selecting a customer, you will then be able to see their invoices and then by clicking on a particular invoice, you can see the analysis of that invoice. For example, the individual product lines. In this video, we're going to be creating an application to calculate the area of walls in a room. A little bit of background here. I recently decided to refurbish two bathrooms and in both cases, I wanted the rooms to have fully tiled walls and I needed to know the area of the walls before ordering the tiles. Unfortunately, both bathrooms have sloping ceilings, meaning that some walls were very odd shapes. I needed a way to calculate the total wall area of each room and thought this would be a good example for this series of videos. Before I show you the final example, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2022, .NET 7. I'm recording this in September 2023 and I'm aware that .NET 8 is due to be released in November 2023 and is going to make some fairly significant differences to Blazor. However, by creating this application in .NET 7, it will still work in .NET 8. So what we do here is not completely wasted. I'm going to be using sync fusion controls. The reason for this being that for individuals and companies with a turnover of less than $1 million, they are free. I'm going to be using SQLite, again, a free database, and I'm going to be using Dapper to link the data with the controls. Now let's have a look at the application. This is how I intend the final application to look. I've basically got three grids, one for rooms, one for walls, and one for deductions. And uh, within each grid, I've added a toolbar that will allow me to add, edit or delete any of the entities for that particular grid. To give myself a little bit of flexibility, I've also added a project level. So by selecting a project, it will display the rooms. And if I select a room, it'll then display the walls. And if I select a particular wall, it'll then show any deductions. And by deductions here, I'm talking about things like doors and windows, where obviously I won't need to include that particular area because I'm not going to be tiling the doors and the windows. So for a particular room, it's, uh, if I look at the detail here, it'll have the dimensions of that wall. And I've got two wall types, simple and complex, to take account of the sloping roof. So for example, the side wall is a complex one. And I say whether they're complex left or complex right, but we'll come into the detail of that later. And then it shows the net area. And it says net area of there, because if there is a deduction, it will reduce the gross area of a wall by the amount of the deduction. So I then get the total net area of all the walls for a particular room. Now, normally rooms only have four walls, but I've allowed for the fact that you can, in fact, have as many walls as you like if you've got an odd shaped room. So that's what we're aiming at. So now perhaps we ought to 
start to have a look at how we get the project set up. As I previously mentioned, there are a number of software tools we're going to need in this project. The first and most obvious is Visual Studio 2022. This can be downloaded from the link I've given here, but make sure that you select the Community Edition. We'll be installing the Syncfusion controls using the NuGet Package Manager, but it would be handy if you obtained your community license before we got that far. Again, this can be instigated from this particular link I show here. From memory, there are a few hoops to jump through, uh, but you don't need to give your credit card. I think the method of verification in my case was a telephone number, so you may need to give a telephone number. We'll be using SQLite for the database, and this link here will allow you to download the DB browser for SQLite, which is both the tool for managing SQLite and, it seems, SQLite itself. As I mentioned, I'll put all these links in the description. Now, down to work. Open Visual Studio and we're going to create a new Blazor server project. So select Create New Project. And in the templates here, enter Blazor. And it's a Blazor server app that we want. Select this and click Next. I'm going to call mine Blazor Wall Area Calculator. And I'm going to leave the location as the default and I'm going to leave the solution name the same. Click Next. And we're going to use .NET 7. So leave that as is. For this project, we're not going to use any authentication at this time. Um, and we don't want to enable Docker. So click Create. And we've got our new project. The next task is to enter or install the new Get package managers that we'll need. And the first one of, that we'll need is Dapper. So if you select Tools, New Get Package Manager, you get package manager for solution and go to the browse tab and in here enter dapper and it's this top one that we want select that and we want to install it click install now alongside uh, dapper and the sql light we'll need system.data.sqlite.core. So if we start in here by entering system, as you can see, I've done it before. And it's this one, system.data.sqlite.core. So we'll install that. And now we need some Syncfusion ones. So if I put a Syncfusion in here, I'm going to select licensing to start with. Select that and install. And then syncfusion.blazer. And we won't want all these, but we'll enter the ones or install the ones I think we need. And then if we need any later, we can come back and enter them later. So first of all, core and accept the license. Then themes, uh, pop-ups. I want inputs, but I can't see it. Well, I know we need drop-downs. Oh, there's inputs. Drop-downs. Grid. Uh, 
notifications. I think that's the last one we'll need. So I'll just have a look at the ones we've got installed. And I'll get rid of the searches. So we've got Dapper, Syncfusion, Blazor Core, Dropdowns, Grid, Inputs, Notifications, Pop-up, Themes and Licensing, as well as System.Data.SQLite Core. So those are the new get package manager you you get packages that we'll need but we haven't quite finished yet uh, for the new get uh, sync fusion package with there are a number of other steps that need to be completed we need to register the sync fusion blazer service add a style sheet add a script reference and then obtain and install the sync license key so the first of all we'll go to imp the imports file so let's close this tab now we don't need that so open the imports under here we need the sync fusion line and to register it we open program.cs at the top we need a using statement and in the builder section we need this line. So that, re that should register the sync few components. Under the pages folder, we should find underscore host. And in there, we need to add a style sheet. So this goes into the head section, which is here. And the link we need is this. So it's referring to the themes bootstrap five. We also need in the dot underscore host page a script reference to the style sheet, which is this line. So we can now save that and close it. We can close the program and the imports and the overview file. But now we need to license the Sync Fusion. And to do this, you need to go to the Sync Fusion web page. Hopefully you will have created account, an account by this stage. And so you should be able to sign in. Select sign in, sign in. Once sign in, select my dashboard, which is available from here, or it should appear on as the opening form anyway. Select download and keys. Select get license key. And here we follow the instructions. So select the platform, which is going to be Blazor. version you can leave as the default you don't need to put a project name in and then click get license key when you do that a, a box will pop up with your license key copy that i suggest you copy it into uh, notepad we can now return to visual studio and uh, reopen program.cs and to register we just need to place some code Put it after var app equals builder dot build. And here you can put in your license key. If you want to put your project in GitHub and don't want to have your license key exposed here, I suggest you put it in app settings dot JSON and then just ref cross refer back to hit the app settings.json here. You can do that by opening app settings.json and just putting this line in here. The sync fusion license key with your actual sync fusion license key and then program.cs. We can replace this with this code. where we've got 
Syncfusion license key in appsettings.json. So we put it, put your actual license key in there, and that cross refers to that. We can now safely add appsettings.json to git ignore in the knowledge that our Syncfusion license key is not going to get exposed. So those are the foundations for the project. Our next step will be to add the database and we'll be doing that outside Visual Studio. Uh, but before we move on to that part, which will probably be in the next video, we ought to check that the project runs. It will work, I think, even with this uh, dummy license key in here. But So let's just check it. Yes, it builds and runs as we would expect. So we can now safely move on to the next stage. I will now replace this with my actual Syncfusion license key, uh, but I'll do that off screen. As I say, the next stage is to add the database and that will be in the forthcoming video. Thank you very much for watching this one. Please note in the description that I've got the links to the various uh, tools that we need. And there's also a link to a blog post where you can see or you can read what I've done in a video. Thank you very much for watching.